Welcome back Tight Wads. Today we are in the bathroom in the tub and we need to replace this uh, no matter how many times I turn it. It's supposed to sit up but it just falls back down. So we've been improvising with when my daughter takes a bath just putting a little foam letter in here to hold it up when we want to drain it. But it's not an ideal solution so we have to figure out how to get this apart. So there's different kinds of these. Some of them, the top piece right here screws off and there's a screw under there and sometimes this piece right here screws off as well. Um, it's gonna be challenging to do because there's nothing catching the drain to allow me to screw either piece off. So we're gonna have to find a way to hold it in place while we unscrew it. All right, so what I've done is I've pulled this up as far as I could got a pair of needle nose pliers in there and I'm going to start by removing just this top piece. And I try to do it with my hand. That's a little difficult so I'm going to lay a rag over it just to, so I don't damage the finish. I'm going to take a pair of standard pliers and grab hold of it and turn it counterclockwise to loosen it. Once I have it loosened I should just be able to unscrew this top piece. And we can look down in there and see that there is a big flathead screw that we need to remove and this whole top piece will come off. So now while holding these pliers tight to hold this from spinning, I will unscrew this screw with my screwdriver. This piece will be removed and we'll see the insides of the drain. So now that we have it unscrewed all the way, you can remove this piece. This is what causes it to slide up and down. There's actually a piece missing. It's broken and fallen off uh, that allows it to lock in place whenever it's lifted and turned. So we can get my pliers out of the way here. We can look down in here and see that now we just have this cross pattern on our drain. They make tools to remove these, but I found that using a pair of pliers along with a pair of channel locks to turn the pliers, Sometimes you can uh, twist this to remove it. So we're gonna give that a shot next. If you look down in your drain, you'll notice there's a cross piece. And to unscrew this, you have to turn it counterclockwise. They make a tool to work with this, but I've also found that a pair of pliers, metal pliers with the handles stuck down in the grooves, and then a pair of channel locks to turn the pliers works as well. So you just get it down in there, um, and turn it counterclockwise until it gives, and then it'll unscrew, and you can easily screw in your new drain. Depending on when your drain was installed, you may have some plumber's putty come out like this. Uh, that's fine. Uh, you can clean it off after you get the drain out. You can either use new plumber's putty for your new piece, but a lot of them now ship with just a rubber washer that sits there in, in place of the plumber's putty. So once the drain is unscrewed, you see it has lots of threads. You can see there's some residual plumber's putty in there and down in the drain as well. Uh, I've cleaned off half of it just with my finger. Uh, you don't really need to clean it out of all this um, because it's just old plumber's putty. Um, the new piece, like I said, comes with a rubber gasket and I'll get it and show that to you. So this is my new piece. It comes with a rubber gasket that is supposed to fit here and seal. I'm still going to put some plumber's putty on the threads just because I already have it. I don't think it's absolutely necessary, but I do want to prevent leaks uh, around the edges of my drain. So um, this new piece functions slightly differently. The new piece is not the kind with the little notch in it. It has a slide in the middle. So when you pull up on the center piece, it's connected to the bottom with threads. When you pull up on the center piece, it simply raises and lowers. It does not turn or does not need to be turned one way or the other in order to stop the flow of water. So again, it's got this little notch that keeps it in line. You can see it on the left side of that slot right there. And all it does is slide up and down. This, this plastic washer right here keeps the water from draining out. Okay, now that I've got some plumber's putty on the threads and my rubber washer in place, I'm going to simply set the drain in the hole and gently turn it clockwise till you feel it start to screw in. 
If it's leaning one way or another, that would be another indicator that you're cross-threading. If you cross-thread this drain, it could cause major problems, so be very careful when screwing this in. Go ahead and screw your drain in as far as you can by hand tightening. Once it gets to a point where you can no longer use your hand to tighten it, once again, put your pliers in and use your channel locks to tighten it all the way down to the base of the tub. Once you have your piece screwed all the way down, you can thread in the center cap. Go ahead and tighten it all the way down with this model and test your drain. Lift it up to let water out and then push straight down to seal again. All in all, this job cost me $20. The part was $18.99 plus tax, so a little bit over $20 for the total cost of this repair. I didn't use any special tools. I used only the tools that I already had uh, in my basement. And the job takes about 20 minutes total. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to leave comments in the comments section below if you have any questions about this job. If you want to see a video showing how to do a full toilet repair on a Mansfield toilet, click the picture in the top left. If you want to see a video showing how to repair your air conditioner on your own, click the video in the top right.